da 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 It's the QWB, Q's with the Buttes, Q's with the Buttes, da 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 You know I'm mobbing with the Alexis, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know you've got questions and we've got your answers, answers, answers. So let's answer them, let's answer them, let's answer them. Sup, Alexis, top Jesse. <laughs> I, that's 25 seconds of my life. I'm never going to get back. <laughs> I hope we don't get copyright striked on YouTube for that. That was, I mean, it was pretty, rendition. pretty spot pretty on. Good. Right. <laughs> and that was, that was freestyle, believe it or not. Uh, just with the beat in my head, uh, in case you missed it this week's episode, I talk about, I'm a big fan of Dre and M I am actually a rapper in another life. Even in this life, I'm I a can rapper. confirm this because I have heard more raps than I would have liked to um, <laughs> from Jesse in the two years that we've done this podcast. So I, I can confirm this. Yes. Oh, my kids are listening. I'm, yeah, I'm <laughs> listening to rap sometimes. I'm like, ah, I can't listen to Coco Melon. I got to listen to some Dre. I just, yeah. Anyway, See, like so. someday your kids are going to watch these videos and they're going to be like, oh, okay, mom raps. Like my kids are going to watch my videos and be like, mom interviewed a pickle when she was 26. Like, is she okay? <laughs> like, so I, I think you're probably in the better lane than I am, the better trajectory. True. This is um, true. So, yeah, this is so. fairly true. <laughs> well, if uh, you know, long story short, this is cues with the buttes. Welcome. Uh, go sure, be sure to check out this week's episode on Monday with Darby Hendrickson. A lot of good stuff there. A lot of the stuff we will cover more mm-hmm. in depth in that episode, very likely. But uh, let's kick it off from Kurt K. He asks, I understand that Felino got suspended for two games for Neen, but why did Adam Lowry get suspended for, or why did, I'm guessing he said, why, why did didn't. Adam Lowry not yeah. get suspended for yanking on Felino's jersey from behind and pulling him to the ground as he went by? Alexis, your take. This obviously goes back to the game in Winnipeg mm-hmm. last week. Um, Felino knees Adam Lowry in the head during their second fight of the evening. Mm-hmm. Um, suspended two games, will not be able to return until Dun-dun-dun-dun, Winnipeg, Winnipeg. Again. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Alexis, did you think that Adam Lowry's, um, and I did, I know exactly the play he's talking yep. about. Go be sure to check out the reviews, right? I mean, earlier in the first period, Lowry definitely mm-hmm. yanked and Dean Epson post game had said, Hey, you know, Felino's not as big of a guy as he is. That's an injury. Yeah. So Alexis, did you think there should have been a call? Should there have been suspension for Lowry? Well, I will say this, if this was the NFL, a flag would have been thrown on the field. That's a horse collar baby. So I, mm-hmm. whether it's suspension worthy or not, I think is borderline. I also don't think Felino should have been suspended for what he did. I know you don't agree with that. No. Um, Jesse, I don't think either of those, like I'm not mad that Lowry didn't get a suspension. Um, I'm more disappointed that Felino did. Um, I understand why Felino did. I just don't really fully agree with it. Um, and, and to the point uh, of the question, um, that could have easily injured, uh, you know, a different sized player or a Felino wouldn't have been able to catch his footing. Cause he kind of like gets yanked back and then kind of skates backwards as he's, uh, oh, my ring light just turned off. Um, he kind of skates backwards. <laughs> Let's see if I can fix this on the fly. Um, and then turns around and, and starts to fight him. Right. So, I mean, I think that in a different situation, he could have easily like hit his head or, you know, something and he didn't. Um, so I don't think it's suspension worthy, um, but definitely not the safest play. Yeah, I don't have, but I mean, it, <clears throat> it could have been, I don't think it's a tit for tat thing necessarily. I think Felino right. and like you deserve to get the suspension. I could have seen up to three games. Um, you know, it's, he's a first time offender. So there's that to yep. be considered and he lost his emotions, but definitely you can't do that. Like there is no excuse for doing that. That could have, you know, especially with all the concussions and everything yeah. that goes on to knee somebody put a lot of force behind that. That's, that's not good. So two games I thought is, is fair enough. It's a storyline come Winnipeg, uh, next week. For yeah. sure. We'll see you thought they're going to but... give them three games. Heck no. They want them back in that lineup for that Yee- Winnipeg game. It's going to be a let's good one. Go. Yeah. Right, what's the next question? <laughs> next question is from Derek F and he wants to know with the Minnesota wild playing every other night for most of the foreseeable future, how many starts per week do you think the wild will give Capo Kakinen, Jesse? I mean, you're going to have to go closer to a 50, 50, whether you want to or not, even if someone's has the hot hand, I mean, you granted you can do back to backs, right? I mean, Cam Talbot's a college hockey player, college hockey guys do it all the time. I mean, it's, it's feasible. Granted that's college hockey. That's not the NHL. And they're not just doing weekend series back to backs. They're playing <laughs> during the week too. So, yeah. I mean, you're going to have to go closer to a 50, 50. And if Kapo Kakinen can keep up the play that he had shown in Cam Talbot's absence, then that's not a problem, right? That's absolutely, let's move forward with that. But I mean, you're going to, I just, I can't imagine any different scenario. Even a 60, 40 seems like a tall Mm -hmm. order because Cam Talbot's up there in age, which let's go back to that first episode of the season (laughs) was my concern is that Mm -hmm. he just, his body can't handle that. I don't 
think that often. And, uh, you know, you hope Koppel's up for, for the task again, when Cam's down, he seems to be, but you know, they've never, we've never seen a situation where they're both playing mm-hmm. extremely well at the same time. So now is that time it's going to have to work because they got no other choice. <laughs> yeah. It, that that's, I think the main point is what other option do you have? Are you going to wear Cam Talbot down to where he's, you know, literally shriveled by the end of the season? I mean, what, what are your options here? I mean, so I agree. You got to go pretty close to 50, 50 here. And at the same time, like you said, play the hot hand. Like if Koppel's, you know, on a streak, give him another game. If Cam's on a streak, give him another game. Um, I think the one of the biggest things you do have to consider here, and I don't know if the coaching staff has cons- necessarily talked about this yet or really considered this yet, but who is going to be your starting goaltender for the playoffs? If you really do feel like your goaltenders are maybe a 1A and a 1B, is Cam your starting goalie? If so, I think you got to give Capo maybe, you know, a few more starts in the regular season so that Cam's not worn down by the time the playoffs come along. And especially we're all hoping the Wild get out of the first round this year, right? I mean, you you might have several playoff series here where you're going to need a good goaltender um, in between the pipes. So we're, we're still at only about the halfway mark, but there's no reprieve here the rest of the schedule. So you have to start thinking about these things now. Um, and, and I do think that for the most part, we're going to see pretty close to a 50-50 split between these two guys. All right. Next question comes from Lisa a, uh, Tim J had also asked a very similar question in regards to the trade deadline, which is not in February, like usual it is in March. So Lisa, a Tim J combo question, who, if anyone, would you like to bring in at the deadline? Um, I have made egregious takes. I believe that said you might trade a goalie for a goalie, which I wouldn't hate. Um, no slight to either of the goaltenders, but there's that, but obviously you need to get deeper up the middle, right? I mean, there's no question if, if Bill Guerin sees this team as a true contender, he's taken that call for a rental for the year, because if there's one piece away, it's the the centerpiece. And if you can get a guy like a Claude Giroux, I know that name's been floated out there. JT Miller, that name's been floated out there. Um, because right now in this window, you still have a little bit of money to spend, not a lot, but a little. And you could move some players that you know are not going to be back and you with won't the have team it next, next year. year. Yes, you right. Like you all have no money. Like, you all have no money yeah. Now. yeah. And <laughs> and again, I, I say this sadly to wild fans, the team that is here this year cannot be the team next year because of cap restrictions. Yeah. So you like them. Sorry. They, they're going to be gone. I, it's not going to work out. That's not what you can do. So yes, you know, unfortunately you're looking at a Kevin Fiala. You're also maybe looking at a Jordan Greenway. Yes. He got the extension, but that doesn't mean that he's not tradable. I mean, really there's quite a few guys on this team that are tradable quite a few untouchables, but also quite a few touchables. So it wouldn't surprise me at all. I'm not saying that Billy G needs to make a move, but it, I feel more and more as it gets closer that he is looking at that rental centerpiece just to really get them <clears throat> through this. And I don't think he'd be wrong in that. Or as we had mentioned in this week's episode, maybe find one additional depth defenseman too. If you can go, I mean, he's found success in going for some cheaper players and has found these diamonds in the rough. Maybe mm-hmm. he does it again, you know, and, and makes the money work there. But I think Billy G believes so much in the team, not necessarily just as it is, but in the fact that, you know, there's one piece that could tweak them to better them. He's going to do it. He'll pull the trigger. He's proven that with buyouts and trades that mm-hmm. he's made in the past. So um, long answer short. Yes. I have a sense that he is going to make a trade, um, again, and I'm sure it will be one for the better. I'm on a little bit of an opposite side of it. I agree that I think Billy G is the kind of GM who's always listening. And like you said, not afraid to pull the trigger at the same time. I am anti-trade at the deadline for the Minnesota wild. I like this roster too much. I think they've done uh, too good of a job to have it shaken up at all. Now at the same time, if you throw a new piece in there, I do think this team is good enough to then morph with that new piece and kind of go right back to what they were doing. Um, mm-hmm. but I just, I like the team too much to change it. So, um, I'm team anti-trade. Uh, but like I said, I know, I know Billy G's always listening, so I wouldn't be opposed, uh, to hearing some of the options if, uh, once that stuff starts to trickle out there. Um, but that's where I sit right now. Nice. Um, all right. So our next question, um, pick your favorite JC oh came in okay. with a lot of questions. Okay, we love see. them. Thanks Jay, but pick one or one of them. Okay. I got a good one here. Um, so JC said, what are your thoughts and guest member thoughts of managing games and rotating other players in and out of the lineup to keep some players fresh yet keeping continuity of the game going the old NBA roster style, mm. keep the good guys fresh. Okay. What are your thoughts, Jesse? 
I mean, it seems like Dean does do a lot of that, right? He kind of seems to keep them rolling until the last minute of the game. But even then, I mean, we've seen overtimes where he's constantly getting those fresh legs because everybody yeah. knows if you can get fresh legs out there, the better your chances are, uh, especially in an overtime situation where people are gas. So I think that you're going to see that continue. I, again, I don't know that there's too many instances on the offensive side where you're overplaying anybody by any means. And I think that's what he likes about the team. Nobody's trying to extend their shifts. Nobody's right, trying right. to stay out there. And if they do like Kevin Fiala had earlier <laughs> this year, he gets bent, they get benched. So, I yeah. mean, I think that's very much part of Dean's MO, the coach's MO um, is just to keep those players fresh, keep them rolling, roll the four lines. You're deep enough on all four lines. Why wouldn't you roll the four lines? Right. So um, it's worked up to this point, but I imagine that's just going to continue, especially again with this schedule, you're yeah. going to have to keep fresh legs because guys are just going to be completely gassed uh, by a week's end. Yeah, I think if you had, you know, guys on offense putting up like Seth Jones, num Seth Jones numbers for like time on ice, then you might consider <laughs> like, okay, we need to spread this out more or, you know, swap, sit some players for certain games. Um, but like you said, Jesse, that's not the case. The while they're able to roll four lines comfortably um, and they're able to do that with confidence that everyone can go out there and do what they need to do. Um, and hoping that this team stays healthy, they should be able to continue to do that. The only time I think you might see Dean pull somebody from the lineup and say, all right, you're going to sit this game or sit this couple of games is at the very end of the season. I'm talking like late April and the wild have a playoff spot secured and they know where they're going to be. And maybe you rest some guys at the very end of the season, uh, heading into the playoffs, because again, the stretch is going to get ugly. It's going to be a lot of games. You're going to have some tired guys come the end of April. Um, so at that point, maybe then, but you know, we talked about this with Darby. Darby's like, we're only halfway through the season. Like we still have a lot left to do. So I don't think we can talk about this just yet. Um, but at the end of the season, I think you might see a little bit more of it. Um, so definitely a, a good question. Something to keep an eye on Darby Hendrickson, our guest in this week's episode. And in, yep. in case we didn't announce that yet, which I don't, I don't think we did. Maybe we did. Well, we announced it now. Now we did Darby <laughs> Hendrickson. Whoop, whoop. No questions for him. Sorry. He's already done. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this one comes from state of hoppy, a little tongue in cheek one. Alexis, how concerned are you with severity of Michael Russo's UBI and what kind of impact could it have on his, on the wild playoff run? Michael Russo, obviously struggling with a back problem <laughs> as he joked, it's cause he's old. Um, but yeah, I mean, poor Russo, right? Yeah. As long as they don't have to like put him in the wild lineup uh, at any point in the season, which I suppose I would be surprised if they're like, Hey, we need some reporters. We need some media mm -hmm. people step up. I mean, up when here. they win, when they finally win the Stanley cup, he gets a day with it. Right. Or like he gets yeah. a ring. But I would will think. his back allow him to lift the cup up is the question. That's what I want to know. <laughs> I mean, we, we do have to consider that. <laughs> yes. Michael Russo. I hope your back is feeling better. I'll ask you a real question. Now, Alexis Rick P wants to know how many wins Will the Minnesota Wild have by the end of the year? They currently have 28 wins at yep. the time of this recording with a lot of games left to go. Yeah, uh, we were at what? Um, just over the halfway mark of the season. Typically, you're going to need 90 plus points to make it into the playoffs. I think we all agree the Wild are making the playoffs this year. I am going to say the Wild are going to finish the season with 52 wins. Excuse yep. me? Mm-hmm. That's 52 100, wins 104 points that's very feasible well okay. 104 and some change with some overtime you know losses they've got a couple on the season so yeah 52 wins that's my final answer i'm punching Ooh. it in jesse okay. i was gonna go 50 but i'm like nah nah i'm not lowballing them let's give them 52 so they've never won it. i mean at least in the past couple seasons they've never won 52 you know that right and as I always like to say, until nobody, <laughs> until somebody did it, nobody. Did I mean, it. <laughs> I go back to their best year, which was 2016, 17, and they only won 20, 49. And I say only because I realize it's not that far off, but yeah, that was their best team. I'm going to go with that lucky number though. 49. Okay. So they're going to win 49. I think, that, I just think like something around 50 or just below you is, said 52. is the most feasible. Lock it no, in. I'm going with 52. I just know it's a very optimistic. You know I'm just going to say 50 just to round it out. I don't like the, the feel okay, of 49. Fair. I'm going to say 50. Okay. So, and that'll yeah. make me feel worse if that's right. Cause that is the one I was originally going to go with, but yeah. I went huh. 52 instead. So that'll be a little bonus okay. feel good for you. Perfect. Yeah. Good <laughs> All right. Um, our friend Max Beach, um, asking with NHL teams now playing in college rinks, when will the wild <laughs> go on a tour of Minnesota barns and where can I provide input on the schedule? 
That would be kind of fun. Although I would like that. That's just the problem. You can't fit enough people <laughs> who would want to go witness that, right? Like everybody would want to go see yeah. a game in St. Cloud. How many is St. Cloud hold? Her Brooks is oh, God, that's a phenomenal rank. It's a yeah. big one. A couple but thousand. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Mariucci. I will not call it 3M at Mariucci. It's yeah, freaking Mariucci. Um, I mean, that would be super cool. It ain't happening. Poor Arizona. Like that's just insulting. I really don't feel that bad. I mean, it is what it is. Like I, the first thing I thought of is like, is Phil Kessel still happy? He picked the coyotes over the wild. Like that was my first thought. I'm like, have fun, have fun playing in front of weird, weird Phil the stadium is what I want to Phil Kessel (laughs) tangent. I saw, um, Wyshynski tweeted this yesterday. Do you know? So the NBA had their all-star draft or they like, they did a draft right back and forth. And I remember the year the NHL did it. I didn't realize they didn't do it because they didn't want to make other players feel sad. And I was like, does this have to do with Phil Kessel when he just sat there all by himself? It was the last, because I think that's freaking hilarious. Like, why wouldn't you do that every year? Like, yeah. just really, like, I mean, maybe Connor McDavid would be the last player picked or whatever. Like, yeah, that would be funny. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I don't know. I, I think, I think Phil Kessel might be regretting his choice to not play for the wild, but that's fine. I, I just genuinely want to know, can they fill 5,000 seats? Like that's, that's. Yeah. We all feel bad for them, but can they fill 5,000 seats? That's all I'm asking. <sighs> Moving on. <laughs> Coach C has a, the, our final question of the week. Minnesota Wild have looked phenomenal lately. Many experts are starting to include them in Stanley Cup talks. Is, there, is their recent success legitimate or is it a product of their schedule? Are the Wild truly contenders now? That's an ops, uh, absolutely great point because not to say that it's been an easy schedule by any mm-hmm. means, but it hasn't been as challenging as this. And that's not necessarily the fact that the games are going to be condensed. It's just the opponents yeah. get significantly harder. Again, recording this before they face the hurricanes, Detroit's no slouch anymore. They're looking okay. Yeah. You've got Florida, Winnipeg, uh, Edmonton. Edmonton, Toronto, the flames Colorado, are playing hot. Like, flames, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yikes, Alexis. So that's a, do you think that um, the schedule enabled them to be, as successful as they had been? Or do you think that it's a team that's going to continue to see that success against some tougher opponents? I think actually the opposite that in ways their schedule early on in the season almost hindered them at some points where they're playing one game a week, right? They're going like five, six days in between games. I mean, at the end of December, beginning of January, like that was a really weird schedule. And I bet if you ask any wild player, they will tell you they did not like that. They would have rather played Mm -hmm. more consistently now, not to the level of consistency we're going to see in the next two months, but they probably would have appreciated a few more games thrown in there. Cause when you're losing, you want a chance to get back in the win call. When you're winning, you want a chance to keep that winning streak going. So either way you want some consistency in your game. So I would say that it's not really something to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, they've played through injuries. They've had lots of different things that could have thrown a complete, you know, wrench in, in their, in their winning, in their points that they were picking up. And for the most part, it didn't, they went on that little bit of a streak where they lost a couple of games in a row. And other than that, they've been able to put um, together, um, good stretches of games. So I do think this upcoming couple of months, we're really going to find out what this team is made of. Um, and I do think that it's fair that they're being talked about as, you know, a team who could potentially make a deep playoff run. I don't think that is, you know, unfair to, to talk about. I don't think it's unfair to say, I would think it would be unfair to not mention it at this point at the halfway mark of the season. Um, are they a Stanley cup winning team? Like, are they my pick? I don't know. I'm not that comfortable yet saying they're going to win the Stanley cup, Mm, but win the conference. They're just not going to win the cup. No, I said they're going to make it to the conference finals. Don't be putting words in my mouth to try to sway the bet your way. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So that's where, that's where I said, I think it'll be fun um, to see what they do this uh, upcoming stretch of the season. How about you, Jesse? Was the first half of the season a bit uh, overly fair to them? I mean, it was, it was generous to them. I think I wouldn't say it was again, a a cupcake. You could argue last year's entire realignment (laughs) looked like a little cupcakey. Um, but no, I mean, I think it is going to be a bigger test the second half between the opponents, between the the schedule itself. Um, I think then you're going to see what they're really made of a little bit. And, and as I've said before, this schedule is similarly resembles what a playoff run could mm-hmm. look like because you're not getting that much downtime until you get through those first couple rounds, yeah. which the wild frankly haven't seen in, in some time. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I wouldn't say that was, that's the reason uh, obviously where they're having success. I'm not comfortable either saying that they are true contenders. Mm-hmm. Um, ask me in like a month. I, <laughs> yeah. a deadline Let's get I through some of these uh, games, get through the trade yeah. deadline. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, I know that's super cheap, right? I'm not the one that put 
money down on Minnesota when they <laughs> yeah. were low odds. Now they have the best odds, I think, but, um, yeah, no, I mean, they're, they're definitely up there. There is something special about this team. And I think they definitely are a team that deserve to be in that conversation mm-hmm. just between the elite skills that they have between the coaching staff doing their thing between just some of the insane puck luck. I know Matt Dumba, who was on a couple weeks ago had said, I've never been a part of a team that's able to pull <laughs> six on five so many times. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Um, just that resiliency. So true contenders, not comfortable yet, um, but definitely special in a deep run team right now as it sits. Yes. So that's going to do it. Thank you guys. These were awesome, awesome questions. Really, really appreciate it. Um, be sure to check out Monday's episode with Darby Hendrickson. A lot of fun conversation with him. Um, we, Alexis and I also discussed Marcus Felino, Karil Kaprizov, all those good uh, buzzwords that you guys like <laughs> to hear. So as always, you're the best. Subscribe, rate, share, love. Hughes with the Beats back next week. Shout out to Dre and M, my boys. Peace, love. Bye.